Hey, I'm Dagny, and in this video, I want to discuss with you the concept of living within seasons or embracing your seasons, your unique seasons of life. This came up in my mind because every time we get closer to the end of a quarter, as you know, in the year, uh, we have four quarters, right? But every three months is one quarter of the year. That also coincides with every three months is another season of the year, almost. And there's this, we've carried like for a while, I feel like, and I've been guilty of this too, of like insisting you need to be like in top productive mode in every quarter and then be kind of frantic towards the end of the quarter if you cannot also announce that you've saved the world and discovered Atlantis in this quarter that just passed, you know? I have found for me what I've been, even though initially I started doing this without realizing this is what I was doing. And then when I realized this is what I was doing, I was like, wow, this makes such a difference where I don't, I no longer subscribe to this uh, notion of being like the same every quarter or being in hyperproductive mode every quarter of the year. Instead, I've, I've become more aligned with the flow of my seasons. Similar to how in nature, in every season of the year, nature does what it needs to do, right? Whether it's winter, whether it's spring, falls, winter, spring, fall, summer. There's something else happening, plus a bunch of mini things happening with nature. And it just does, and it just, unless you choose to completely disrupt it, it does what it needs to do. And it's very natural. Why can't us as humans do the same? For example, I've noticed that in the first quarter, which for me kind of starts the, like my winter season kind of starts in December, maybe even November and goes through to February, maybe March. And for me, which I noticed this year that happened. And then I look back the last year and the year before that, I think this happened too, where I kind of withdraw into myself. I'm not, I don't hibernate like I'm about, I like I'm asleep for four months straight. No, but I don't, it's, it's at that time that I feel more interested in diving into knowledge. Like I'm more interested in diving into books. I'm more interested in, in taking up, a, a, sitting through a webinar. I'm more interested in doing research. I'm more interested in like tinkering and mastering my craft or, or other things that I find interesting. And, and not really, and, and really doing that for my own, part of it is my own enjoyment, but I know also part of it is like, well, I'm cultivating skills and stuff that I'm gonna be utilizing later. But I, I, I don't really want to share any of that. Like none of that process is, am I documenting it in order to share online or in order to share with other people? It's very much almost like a, would it be considered hibernating? Because you're kind of like sequestering yourself in a way, but I'm not sleeping. Yeah. And then I'll take note that in March and April, I feel this like, oh, wow, the sun is out. Let me, uh, I want to put my camera on again. I want to take photos again. I want to, I'm going to go outside. I want to, let's, let's bring the microphone. Let's, I want to paint. I want to do this. I want to bring in the colors and I want to just share it, share it with everyone in person, virtually. It's fine. You know, like let's, let me look, look at all these new things I, I discovered or have been working on and have, you know, mastered, yeah. 
let's share it because you know what I've been thinking and I've and I've dissected it and I've experienced it and now let me share it with you like that's how I now that I'm really taking notice that is what I've been going through in my season and there's like a difference in energy there's a difference in attitude and I feel the beauty of that is I actually feel more productive but I guess that's me because I'm it's almost like I'm changing my definition of productivity because that my so-called winter season is also a time where I'm doing a lot of reflection a lot of taking stock a lot of what do we need to shift or move out or reassociate or disassociate really for myself and within myself so that I truly do feel when I switch into the, the so-called spring season, I really do feel rejuvenated or lighter or more, um, like more ready to peek out and let me see what's going on in the world now. And let's just, let's just experience it. And I'm starting to feel like that's more healthy in terms of not forcing myself to be a machine. or to try and act like a machine. Because then I'm able to be more, like think about it, if you're able to flow in this way, which of course looks different for everybody, depending on what you need and depending what time and space you got right now, I feel like you're then able to be more intentional. So then you can truly take stock and understand what progress you're making and what direction that's going in that's truly for you, that truly makes you happy, that truly makes you feel supported, energetic, loved, healthy, lighter. Instead of pushing, going, 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 according to someone else's clock, and someone else's system and wondering why you just feel drained and exhausted all the time. Even though on paper, you're doing a whole lot. If you check your steps or whatever app you have on your phone to check all the things about yourself, you're doing a whole lot. But if you feel drained and exhausted and sometimes even lost while doing a whole lot, is that productive? Can we change what we mean when we say productive? Must productive only mean you finish tasks or you clocked in and you clocked out and that's it? What about you? What, how, what does that have to do with you? What does that have to do with how you feel? What does that have to do with where you would like to be or who you would like to become? Now, don't get me wrong, having milestones and scheduling events and tasks and having goals and understanding the steps to get to that goal, all of that is important, yes. But we can still balance that with, we can still maintain that and maintain that we can still balance both. I feel like we don't, I feel like we're doing ourselves a disservice if we maintain the, no, you gotta, oh, you gotta be on that grind at all times and completely disregard nurturing the season you're in. Because if you were aligned with your season, that grind 
If that grind was aligned with the season, you would know when you got to shoot your shot and when you should probably polish up what you want to shoot your shot with. You would know when to initiate and you would know when to pull back and allow the invitation to come to you. Instead of always just like going in like one energy and wondering why you're tired and then also feeling disappointed because if you're putting all this energy and you're not getting what you want, then why are, we, why are we putting the energy? So I put together some questions to reflect on, okay? So this is a concept that I initially shared with my subscribers on my newsletter, which can be found at bandolinews.com. And I shared some questions on how to implement this in your own life, because I feel like regardless, regardless of what type of lifestyle you are participating in in this moment in time, how many responsibilities you have, et cetera, et cetera. I feel like this notion of being in tune with your seasons, being in tune with your needs and what your energy needs in that moment in time can be implemented in your life. It doesn't require you to always be like Zen and levitating while doing yoga, okay? Like you don't have to travel to the Himalayan mountains in order to do this, right? But it does take, I feel like for me, I just take note that it does take time and discipline to really embody this for yourself and then be able to adapt it and implement it in a way that truly resonates with you. I created some questions to reflect on and, ooh, it's 4.44. And, uh, I shared a similar message. Well, it was actually more in depth um, to my newsletter subscribers uh, at bandolinews.com. And I shared some questions of what to reflect on to start the process of adapting this into your life. So I'm gonna share with you, I'm gonna show you three of those questions, okay? Just to start, just to start, because we've got to ease our way into it. You know what I'm saying? You can't just like dive in because then you'll feel overwhelmed. And that's not good. So, are you ready? Okay, so first question. What word or words describe your current season? Go ahead and write it down, reflect, go ahead, reflect on it. Maybe later, write it down. And a caveat to that question is also, or maybe the sub question to that question, like part 1A, this is part 1B. Do those words describe this a season that just passed or a season you're moving into? This is trying to get you a sense, are you currently, like, are you shifting seasons right now or are you still in the middle of a season? Because yes, our seasons, I feel like our life seasons, yes, can be aligned with shifting of seasons with nature. But similar to how there's multiple sm little, little, little things happening, there's multiple little, little things happening in nature with every season. I feel like in life seasons, there's multiple, multiple, multiple little, little things happening within a bigger overall season. And sometimes like you can't shift into the next one until all those other things have done what they need to do. So that's question one. Next question. How did I take care of myself in my last season? And this can be anything and everything from, did you eat properly? Like, did you eat what you needed to eat during this last season? Did you show up for yourself during this last season? Did you maintain healthy boundaries during this last season? Did you release no what no longer serves you during this last season? Did you speak up for yourself? Those things, you know what I'm saying? Did you treat yourself? during this last season. Things like that. Okay, you got it? I'm going on to the next one, okay? Okay, okay. And what should I give you for the third one? Okay, third one. What risks did I take? And how do those risks, how do those risks connect with my journey? I feel this is a good one. All of the questions are a good one, but I, I in particular, um, like this question because I think it, it 
it helps to take stock of how are you how are you taking ownership of your seasons because comfort being comfortable is lovely i definitely try my best to be comfortable wherever i am but but i feel like taking note of what risks you like you intentionally or unintentionally took gives a sense of what you are, what movement is happening within you, what you are hoping to move away from, what you're hoping to move into, what is no longer serving you, what would you like to stretch out into or expand into, right? Okay, so those are your three questions, yes. So journal, reflect, I think you'll be quite pleasantly surprised what you will discover with them. And overall, this, I feel this notion of seasons is a way to, this notion, I feel like this, this idea, this concept of living in like life seasons is for me a way to be more loving for yourself. Like to be more compassionate to yourself, to be more gentle with yourself and to be more comfortable with, with your authenticity, with your humanness, with how beautiful you are in every season And there's certain aspects of your authenticity that blossoms more than others in each season. Catering to that, I think, can help us be more supportive of ourselves, as opposed to trying to push only one aspect of ourselves in every season because that is supposed to be productive and sometimes neglecting the other parts of ourselves. I hope you take the time to have those reflections and see how you can implement or adapt what living in a season would look like, living within your season would look like. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. So let's continue the conversation in the comments. Do you already do this? What would this look like in your life? Do you have any questions on how to get better at doing this in your life? Share with me in the comments. Uh, also, since this, these are the types of things I share in my newsletter, and I kind of literally just share the questions in the email, it would, I, would you find this helpful? Would you find this helpful in an email? Would you find stuff like this helpful, like in an e-guide? Or, or like an audio, do they have that? Like an audio journal or audio meditation type thing? Let me know, please. Cause I would, you know, I, 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 among other things, of course, I'm looking to produce things that are truly valuable to you. So you're more than welcome to join the Bandele Muse newsletter at bandelemuse.com, um, where of course there's other cool content there too, in addition to products. And uh, talking about, oh, and you know, maybe I should start saying that I'm sponsoring my own videos because I've been, I've been rocking my products in a lot of my videos. So <laughs> I'm sponsoring myself, y'all. <laughs> Okay, so this is, I am wearing Bandele Muse. These are Bandele Muse right here. Yes, um, gold and brass and these beautiful beads. Are the engraving cool? Isn't that cool? And these engravings on, on the gold and brass bracelets are inspired by African print. So some of them have um, not only just etchings, but also actual symbols and stuff. And then this also pendant and this 
is also banned in the news, all made in Ghana. Well, I hope you found this helpful and I encourage you to uh, explore your own seasons and add a little add a little intention to it. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe. I'll see you next time.